Hi, I'm Jeff and I love Japanese saws. And if you love Japanese saws like me and you find yourself doing a lot of mitres, uh, you can consider making one of these. If you are familiar with Japanese saws, you know that the blade is very, very fine. So the saws with the full backs on them um, have a blade that's actually only 0.3 of a millimeter thick and the kerf is only marginally more than that. Um, if you had a mitre box that was made for a western style saw that had a much thicker plate, your Japanese saw would just wander around, wiggle around in there and you wouldn't get the accuracy. The angle that I'm going to cut today is 45 degrees, but you can apply this technique to any other angle including a 90 degree, a 60 degree, a 73.9 degree, but for the sake of the video today, to keep the video short and so you don't get tired of my Kiwi accent, uh, we're just going to do 45 degrees. Of course there's lots of ways to skin the cat and there's lots of ways to make a mitre box. I've had to think about the way that I want to make it um, and I'm going to explain the reasons why I'm doing it that way as I go. So one of the things that I decided to do when I was considering how to uh, go about this project was that I wanted to rehearse the cuts that I was going to make ahead of time do them multiple times so that I could be sure that I would get the accuracy that I needed. So for me the logical first step is to get the two side pieces together, clamp them securely in the vise and mark out the 45 degree angle on the top of them. Alright so I'm practicing the layout and I'm going to make a cut. I've laid it out with a knife. One of the great things about Japanese saws is that they're so fine that they'll actually sit naturally into a knife mark. So I tend to avoid using a pencil when I'm using Japanese saws. So to actually lay it out, I've used this eBase Square and Mitre Height Gauge. It's a product uh, that we sell here at Timbercon. It's actually for uh, measuring the height off the, off the surface. But I like it because it's got this um, bar on the side that you can then butt up against the timber, at the edge of the timber and mark your mitre from there. So having marked out the line with the knife, you've now got a cut that's actually the start of your cut. The saw will fall down into that cut and I'm going to leave the mitre gauge uh, in place while I cut the beginning of the cut. And I'm just going to pull backwards gently, nice gentle strokes. I'm not pushing down too hard into the timber. Um, we don't want to cause the teeth to chatter off the timber or, or whatever. Japanese saws are really sharp so you don't need to force them down. We also don't want to damage the gauge as well, so you want to make sure that the teeth are well down below the level of the, uh, of the steel there. Okay, so that went pretty well. I've gone about 10 millimeters down and I've managed to get that pretty square. The reason why I didn't go all the way down with the cut is that I'm going to finish that off after it's been glued and that's going to make it, I think it's going to make it a lot easier to glue up two pieces as opposed to four pieces. One of the tricky bits about cutting the pieces while they're together is that when you then separate them across the base part um, they're going to have to be offset. So you've got a nice line um, but unfortunately when you open that up uh, those two pieces no longer line up, but line doesn't line up. So you're going to have to offset it this way. But what I figured was I was going to use my Japanese saw as sort of like a straight edge. I know that it fits into that kerf because it made the kerf and I'm just going to gently put it in there and that will get those side pieces to register together with each other and they'll move together like that and then I'll just be able to glue those to the base piece. Okay, so the glue's dried. The most important thing now is to actually finish off the cut of the mitre slot there. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm actually going to put a square down there from the top just to give myself a visual guide um, and keep that cut nice and straight. So 
So that's one way to make a mitre box. My name's Jeff, thanks for watching. Uh, for more information on Japanese saws, please click the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.